Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our channel. We have the lovely Jennifer Bailey. Ginger. Huh? Ginger. What did I say? Jennifer. Oh, it's okay. Ginger? Oh, yeah, my it's okay. God. <laughs> Ginger Bailey. I know her name, dude. Yes. Uh, anyway, she is it's going okay. to, with the help of Eric, bring in uh, John Bonet uh, Ramsey and her mom. Jean Bonet? Mm -hmm. We did uh, an interview uh, on her God, years ago, but we're going to do it again because you never know what has changed. And um, if you want to find out more about Ginger, and by the way, thank you so much for helping Ronnie's mom. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yes. You were a huge yeah. help. Anyway, yeah. she, she is wonderful. She's very powerful with her Reiki. So sweet. She's yeah. Great so channeler. Sweet. So, yeah, check her information out in the description box below. Oh, also, I want to let y'all know. Uh, the director, filmmaker, producer, Paola Marino, is is uh, wanting me to give a call out uh, for video testimonials for Eric for the documentary. She wants, if you want to be a star in the documentary, uh, then I have sent everybody an email. Uh, and also I've posted all over social media and I put it on TikTok. So, and YouTube, I think, too. So uh, look that up. And if you do want to do that, then the, the instructions are all included in what I have posted. So, hi, Eric. I love you. Hi, Mama. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I hope we're going to be yeah. with us for Thanksgiving. I'm sure you will. You'll have a place at the table. There'll yeah. be 16 of us. So <laughs> we'll squeeze you in. You can sit on my yeah, lap. He's, he says, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. He's he's pacing right now. He's he's anxious. He's anxious. Oh, okay. About well, I guess yeah, I need better get stuck. No, no, that's not why. He just there's a lot of lot of energy around this. A lot of people oh. want to hear this. He's saying, "Wow, all right." Jean Benet Patricia Ramsey, born August 6, nineteen ninety, died December twenty fifth or twenty sixth is unclear. Nineteen ninety six. God, she was an American child beauty queen who was killed at the age of six in her family's home in Boulder, Colorado. A long handwritten ransom note was found in the home. Her father, John found the girl's body in the basement of their house about seven hours af after she had been reported missing. She had sustained a broken skull from a blow to the head and had been strangled. Uh, a garrot was found tied around her neck. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Jean Bonnet, sweetheart, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. That's cute. She, she says, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. She, okay, so she's wearing a red, this cute little red dress. She's not dressed up like um, like pageant style. Oh, she looks like a sweet little six-year-old. No makeup, nothing like that. Just a red dress with these pink hearts all over it. She's got a ribbon in her hair with her hair, just part of her hair in a ponytail, the rest down. Um, and she's just sitting there sweet. She's got a rocking chair. She's like sitting in a rocking chair, like a little, oh. little child's rocking chair. Um, and her mother's standing next to her. Um, and she's wearing a blouse and a skirt, but they are together. Okay. They're together. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Eric's right next to him. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Was, was your, did, did you experience any, I mean, can you tell us about your death? Was it quick? Uh, was there a lot of panic or confusion she says there was a lot of confusion she was asleep um what she's saying is that somebody took her out of her bed okay so um she says she remembers uh not being able to talk she had something over her mouth she could not talk um and then she remembers like she was taken, but then she doesn't remember anything until until later on when she started to wake up. And then um, it was some stranger. It was a stranger she didn't know. OK, um, and this is this is her viewpoint. But we're going to talk about like what happened from another viewpoint. OK, yeah. um, she's saying that she didn't remember. Um, like how she got there, she, she was very confused, didn't know how she got there. Um, she she's saying though that she felt at ease like there was something that came over her where she felt at ease at first like because she started to get scared and then something came over her and made her feel at ease but then all of a sudden um she realized that she was with somebody that she wasn't supposed to be she was trying to see where she was at and then it went dark again 
Okay. Um, she's saying after it went dark, um, she doesn't remember anything until um, she like came out of her body. Oh, after, wow. yeah. Yeah. I came out of her body. Um, my body's like getting like weird feelings. So I'm just trying to relax it. Um, yeah. Take your time. I know this is not easy, Ginger. Yeah, she um, she started to realize after she passed what was going on, what had happened. She had there was family there with her. There were guides, angels. Um, she was surrounded, and they were trying to explain to her what was happening and what happened. Um, so. There's probably going to be questions that are coming for this, but um, we can wait for the questions or I can just tell you now, like what, who, you know, who yeah, tell, go ahead, let's say, and then we'll look at the questions and see if they're okay. 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 Unknown. So, so just to get rid of this conspiracy theory right away. Okay. It was not her father or her mother or her brother. Okay. okay? It was not her family. It was, however, somebody who uh, knew her mother um, from the pageants. This was somebody, okay. um, and this is Eric. Eric is telling me this, okay? Eric's bringing me this information. He's saying this was somebody who um, was connected to her mom. And he would, like, stand around and listen, like, at the pageants. He, like, worked. Worked at, like, the setup and everything. Oh, okay. The people set that up. Um, and... He would listen to like what's going on. He was very obsessed with her, watching her constantly. Um, he was not right. Okay. Yeah. He was not right. And Clearly, then, yeah. 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 And um, so uh, from this other point of view that Eric is showing me, um, he was in the house before they came home. Okay. okay. He'd been there a while in the house. Mm. Um, he'd been all over the house. If they would have like, he had like gloves on though. Right. But I think okay. like if they would have really checked this house, they would have got a lot more than they did. Um, but it was really hard. I guess Eric says there was like a lot of people in this house at that time. Cause they did, yeah. they thought it was a, a kidnapping. Yeah. Um, so this person waited and, um, when they got home, he waited until he thought everybody was asleep. So he goes and gets her out of her bed. He puts tape over her mouth right away with his hand. Does um, he use chloroform uh, to knock her out? Or no, okay. no. But he he um, he has something where he like uh, just like uh, knocks her out, like zaps her or. And I think I heard something like this. So this isn't coming from this is coming from Eric. But I'm sure this is a connection of what he's saying. Like he. Um, uh, what do you call it when they like uh taser yeah like taser so he it like it, it like shocked her like she was shocked like it knocked her out oh. for a, a little bit okay so um disorientated that was the word i was looking for like kind of yeah. disorientated like um made it where she didn't know what was going on and yeah. she was still so he could carry her um he put her up over his shoulder okay and then carried her down to the basement um, also, Eric just said that he also carried that taser because um, in case somebody woke up or, you know, like it was like his defense in case he got caught in the house. OK, okay. So they always had this on him. So Eric is saying that um, so he carries her down. He's showing me him going down to the basement. Um, he starts to tie her up, like tying her hands and stuff. He starts tying mm -hmm. her up. Um, he does things to her, okay? There, uh, I will say that there was no rape, but there were other things done, okay? Actually molested, but but not truly raped. Right, right. Um, she started waking up. She started waking up, okay? Um, and that's where she started getting scared and trying to figure out where she was. Um, and um, so that feeling that I'm feeling that she felt when she woke up, it was it was fear. It was like an instant yeah. fear. Like, and it's just, you can just feel it. Uh, but it wasn't for long. She did have like people on the other side supporting her. It wasn't so that's for long. That's where she got uh, the sudden feeling of being at ease. Yes. In, yes. Angelic and, support. Right. Right. Um, right. 
so then um, Eric shows me he hit her. He hit her, knocked her out. He hit her on the head and knocked her out. And this looks like um, this looks like a bar or something, like a pipe bar. I want to say like a crowbar or something. Okay, he hits her with, but it was um, he hit her pretty hard. Um, and and so then she like blacked out. Okay, Good. at that at that point, so. Um, to back up just a tiny bit, Eric is saying that he planned on taking her. He did plan on taking her. But what happened was he could not control himself once he got her in the basement. Mm -hmm. And he ended up killing her. Um, he didn't, he, that wasn't his plan. He wasn't okay. going to kill her right away. Um, he could not get her out the window either, uh, Eric is saying. Like, he huh. Things that he planned on doing like wasn't working, yeah. but he got overexcited anyway. And you know, he like it just happened too too fast. Like it just happened fast. Was, was uh, it was it was he planning just to kidnap and get ransom money? No, no, oh, okay. that that was a distraction. That oh, was a okay. distraction. Yeah. Okay. He didn't he wasn't gonna do this for money. He was gonna take her. And okay. uh, she would have ended up, you know, dead. You know, he was going to kill her. He was not going to give her back. Um, that was to keep them off of his track, Eric is saying. Like, it was to keep them busy or keep them off the track of him. Um, his mind is just like, as Eric shows me, his mind just races. It's like race, 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 race. And there's just like all these like um, just weird, like uh, uncontrollable thoughts that happen in his head. And it's just racing. And so he says that um, it went too fast. He, he was strangling her um, and he was trying not to kill her still. He still did not want her to die, but he lost control. Yeah. And that it just kept getting tighter and tighter and tighter as he was like, it's like he's twisting something, twisting, twisting or something. Um, so. After that, he leaves. He's showing him leaving. He's leaving. Um, and it wasn't very long um, after he left um, that they started to wake up in the house. Oh. Probably within an hour. He was gone like within that hour that they were starting to wake up. Um, why, why did he want to take her and eventually kill her? Because she... he was attracted to her or didn't like her because they, maybe she thought she was a brat. I don't know why. No, because he was a, he was not just attracted. He was obsessed. obsessed. He, it was like, um, with her was, beauty. Or yeah. Her beauty, or just everything about her, everything uh -huh. about her. He had watched her, um, at these pageants, yeah. um, in, in Boulder, not though he didn't like, it doesn't look like he followed. Like, I think they went other places. Yeah. things but this looks like somewhere in their hometown he's also eric just said he also had been in their house before this mm. i don't know how i don't know if it was like it makes me feel like he like knew somebody i can see him walking through the house um somebody that knew them um he, he said uh, pats is chiming in right now she said we knew a lot of people she said yeah we knew a lot of people we had a lot of people in and out of our house um and uh friends acquaintances and it it would have just been like since the the investigation she's she's talking about the investigation now which is a whole another thing but she's saying that it um it really was a mess that's what she just said it was just a total mess um they kept focus on them because they didn't have a lot to go on um because it was such a mess it was the whole scene was a mess um so yeah she's saying that um it was someone who was connected to her oh and then eric just said that that's actually why the letter was um addressed to mr ramsey was also to detour is that how you say detour people to get them off of the idea that you know he didn't want them to think that uh, they were connected, that he was connected some way with um, Patsy. Oh, now, she didn't okay. know him. She didn't know him personally, but she knew who he was, like, just yeah. because he was around the pageants. Um, he listened to things she would say um, very closely. Um, he was very sneaky. 
Mm. And um, he looks like he's about um, about 5'11", maybe 6 foot, 5'11", 6 foot. Okay. Um, just a normal build um, of a person. Like, just like he's not real big, not not tiny. He's just like How a normal size. He was in his 30s. His late uh, 30s is what it looks like. Uh, yes. 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 Any facial hair? What color hair? And any facial hair? It looks like it's a, either a, a dark blonde or a reddish, like a dark reddish blonde. Like there's some yeah. red. And it, it also looks like he has kind of like that redhead skin kind of. Okay. It's like um, he, he is still alive. I was just asking them if he's still alive. He's still alive. Um, no. Where is he? No. Huh? Where is he? Yeah. So I just asked her, I was asking um Patsy if um okay. So she's saying that he is still alive, but I was asking if he had done this since or before. Oh yeah. She says no. Um and then Eric shows me he he steps in and he's showing me this guy is uh incapacitated. It's something that happened to him. Like, I don't, this is like a stroke or a heart attack. Oh. Something incapacitated him. Okay. So he is still alive, but he um, isn't like he, he has uh, uh, nursing care. Like he has to have oh, care yeah. um, okay. taking care of him. So um, he's, he's not able to Interesting. Yeah, go out and do this anymore. So um, that, that's interesting. That's interesting because it feels like a universal type thing. Like uh, yeah. this happened for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. There was a contract, you know, that this was supposed to happen. Um, but it actually increased the energy around what was going to happen to him is what they're showing me. Oh, yeah. For this to happen. Yeah. It like made things like quicker and uh, to happen to him. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like it happened to him in his like uh, late 40s. Wow. So it wasn't, yeah, it was like not a long time after he did this, but. Well, Patsy, what did you think about the guy who worked in the pageants before this? When, 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 before this happened, did you think it was creepy? Did you get any weird vibes from him or was he pleasant? She's saying that she never really noticed anything different or off. There were a lot of men that worked around like setting up like the stages, yeah. things like that. So yeah. she never really like, um, because, okay. So she's saying because she never really had like a relationship with this person, you know, where they'd sit and visit or talk to each other. She just knew of who the people were. And then she didn't know who this was until she passed. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. She didn't know what had happened to her daughter. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, it, it very hard. Very, it, she says that was like the hardest thing, Ugh. and she was medicated. She said she was medicated a lot after this happened. Oh God, I bet. So yeah. What was your relate, y'all, uh, Jean Benet and and Patsy? Can y'all talk about your relate daughter mother relationship? Each of you. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> so cute. Uh, John Benet, John Benet, saying that she looked up to her mother. Um, she really enjoyed doing these pageants. Okay. Although she says that there were times that she would get bored with some yeah. of the lessons. Um, but she still did them, of course, you know, but, um, but she loved being on the stage. She loved, um, entertaining. She loved to, um, like sing and dance and perform. She just loved it. Oh. Um, it, it just, it was something that she really enjoyed and she loved that her mother did this with her. Mm. Um, so they had a good relationship. They really did. They, they had a good relationship. Um, I also just asked her, I asked, um, not, not John Benet, but I asked Patsy about like um, how the relationship in the home, like with the dynamic of the family. And um, she said it was good. She said um, the, the dad was gone a lot. He was, he was busy with work okay. a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and they tried to like keep the kids entertained by doing things. Like I, I think her son, she's shown me did things like sports and, uh, looks like karate or something. Okay. Um, but she loved, um, JonBenet and this was her little princess. She called her oh. and 
she was in pageants herself, I guess she's wow. saying. And so okay. she always thought that she enjoyed that. Plus there were benefits that came with that. So she, yeah. that's why she did this with her daughter, because it was something that she knew about. Like it was something she knew yeah, a lot like, about. Yeah. yeah. So she could, you know, share. So the relationship was good. And they never, she never forced Sean Bonet to participate. No. No, not at all. Um, the only thing that John Bonet says it, that she like is what she said a minute ago about um it getting bored, boring. Yes, like, sometimes of the, of the lessons and stuff. Yeah, and and okay, so Patsy's also chiming in right now, and she says that um in hindsight, looking at this, she wishes that she wouldn't have done so much like pushed it so much yeah. um even though john benet loved it she wished that you know she would have like backed off just a little bit because oh, okay. she did she said she did get like a lot like it was like she was living through her daughter oh yeah um, way, you know but um she didn't realize that when she was here yeah doing yeah. yeah it's after you know she passed she looks at that so okay i guess we'll start with the questions from the wonderful community we've got like a lot oh my god this might be a four-part series here. Anyway, uh, coroner, the coroner thought Jean Bonnet's last meal might have been raw pineapple, but the parents did not recall her eating pineapple that night. Raw pineapple was found in a bowl in the kitchen. Was that actually raw pi pineapple the coroner had found in her gut, or did he assume it because the, uh, of the color or some feature about it? Had Jean Bonnet eaten raw pineapple in the home after returning from a Christmas party. Okay. And so, it, it, did she sneak out of her bed to do it? No, no. Um, no. Um, actually, uh, John Bonet is saying that she ate um, some kind of fruit salad or something at the Christmas party. Um, and oh. then Patsy is saying that her son, John Bonet went right to bed. They put her right to bed. She was asleep when they got home. They put her to bed. Oh. Um, and that her son um, was the one who had that before he oh, went to okay. bed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look up something. Um, there's some person by the name of Burke. Uh, the best part is that that, Burke did That's it. her brother. That's JonBenet's brother. Oh, okay. All right. Burke's fingerprints, there we go. You're right. Uh, were found on the bowl of pineapple. A bowl that had been washed and put away before the pineapple was placed in it. There's a presumption, or perhaps it's confirmed knowledge to L.E. law enforcement, that Burke had eaten the pineapple from that bowl that night. Had John Benet nicked a piece or two of pineapple out of the bowl while a brother was um, eating from it and had that angered him no that's apparently he, she didn't have that no she really didn't she really did not get up after yeah. after they put her to bed she did didn't. they get along burke and her <clears throat> yeah they did he was he was the older sibling he also um i'm he, eric is chiming on this one eric says that um he was a little bit on the spectrum okay so just a little bit um Pat, patsy patsy and yeah and uh, although they didn't um diagnose as much back then for autism um patsy's saying that they did kind of have a sense that you know there was something what there was something like that happening like they didn't know exactly what but they could tell with his personality but he was a sweet kid he was a good kid they're okay. saying um, and, but John Bonet saying they did get along like brothers and si sisters do. They would fight over things. He would get yeah. a little jealous. She, you know, got a lot of attention and he would get a little jealous, but, but nothing like violent, like, you know, not okay. violent fights or anything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Did John Bonet scream that night? A neighbor apparently heard a child scream. <clears throat> if John Bonet did, where was she then? And why didn't her parents hear it? She said yes. Um, this was in the basement, um, and this was right before he knocked her out. Yeah, because Jean Benet's uh, bedroom was, or Jean Benet, I don't know what it is, on the second level, as was Burke's. And the parents were on the third level, and the kitchen was on the ground floor. So it was quite far from the basement. The parents. Yeah, she's saying, he's saying, um, Jean Benet and Eric both said at the same time this was in the basement um okay and it it feels like and um 
it was almost like a, a pain, like, like out of pain and fear altogether. Like yeah. it was just, uh, she, it scared her. She was scared. Who yeah. left the high tech boot print in the basement? Was that connected to the case? Eric said, yes. Is that Bert? I mean, not Burks, but the killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who left the scuff mark on the wall beneath the open basement window. It's him. It's the killer. Yeah. This open window had its glass broken months earlier by John, but had not been repaired, and cobwebs had formed that the law enforcement found um, tattered. The cobwebs were torn. However, law enforcement had fi film or uh, photo that there was an intact cobweb left. So investigators were split whether the basement window was the entry or exit point. Was it? It was both. It was both. Entry okay. and exit. Yeah. Right. Um, it just it just happened to be that it didn't get, you know, uh, bumped. You know what right. I mean? He was very careful. This guy was very very sneaky, very careful, and was in that house a while and had been in it before. And um, I'm asking if he'd been in it like another time when they weren't home. No, but he had been to the house. And okay. like he knew the grounds and everything. Right. Like he'd been around the house. Did, why didn't he leave from, uh, just leave by the door? Because apparently the security alarm was left off. Apparently from before that time. Eric is saying he didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't want to take a chance. That's what oh, he's saying. Yeah. He's saying he didn't know. He didn't want to take And he already knew he could get in and out of that window. So he stuck with that area. Okay. And he'd been down in the basement before they got home. So oh, yeah, yeah. felt comfortable there, you know? Okay. Yeah. Something suggests John Bonet might have been cleaned or wiped down from the groin. Did any of the Ramses do that before the police arrived? Or was he even wiped out? No, no, they didn't know. They really did not know where she was okay. when they called the police. Yeah, they really did not know. Um, the, the, was she wiped down maybe by the perpetrator? No, no, but um, like kind of redressing her, kind of move things okay. around is what, what Eric is showing me. Yeah, but not like, no. Okay. Not, no. Like what, putting her panties back on? Yeah, right, right. Just moving the clothes around. But she wasn't, he didn't have anything where he was wiping her down or anything. Oh, okay. That's what, that's what they're saying. Anyway. All right. What yeah. things in the Ramsey home had been staged, if anything, in order to mislead? Maybe maybe nothing. Uh, let's see. No, there was nothing staged. Um Okay. Yeah, uh, I was asking about the letter. Um, yeah, she found it on the stairs, and it was just like sprawled out, like just like sprawled out, laying on the on the steps. So that you know, nothing was moved, nothing was staged. It was right where she found it. Okay, everything she said was right. All right. Uh, was Amy apparently not her real name? The twelve-year-old who was assaulted in her bedroom, September fourteenth, nineteen ninety-seven, in another affluent uh, neighborhood, two miles from the Ramsey home, a victim of the same assailant. Reportedly, cigarette stubs of the same brand were found outside both homes, and Amy's assailant was never caught for that crime. But of course, uh, Patsy thought that he had not committed anything since. No, no. broke cigarette stubs. I I'm hearing no to that. Okay. So, yeah, okay. I'm hearing no to that. Can investigator Mr. Lewis Lou Smith, who has passed over, share what he got right and what he got wrong about the John Bonet case that would be helpful to current investigators? So he was trying to prove this case, Eric says. Um, let me see if I can pull him in. What, what I'm getting is that he didn't really have anything um, because they were all looking. What I'm getting is that they were mostly focused on um, the family. So um, yeah. he's not giving me anything. Okay. He doesn't know. Yeah. 
Now he's not giving me anything. This is weird. Um, it is an open case, and maybe that's why. But um, he's just saying uh, what I'm getting very lightly is some of the things he got were right, but not not a lot of it. He was he wasn't on the right track or something. Okay, is what I'm getting. Yeah. All right, before we pause and then go to part two, just a rapid fire, some real quick yes or no questions. Well, not all of them. Who wrote the John Bernay Ramsey, uh, Ramsey ransom note that was left in the home? They signed the letter as SBTC. What does that stand for? It, it, that didn't stand for anything. Um, he was trying to distract people. Oh, yeah. To, to, you know, if they were sitting there looking for and waiting for someone to call and think it's some group, they're not going to be looking for this guy, you know? Oh. So in his mind, remember I was talking about how it raced and he was in that house a while. And that letter was wrote, Eric says, before they even got home. Okay. Was was it written in the home? Or yeah, just, it okay. was. Yep. So nothing SBTC doesn't stand for anything like No, that. it doesn't. He was just trying to make it like there was some group, Eric says, some okay. like group that was involved with this. Okay. Did the brother accidentally kill his sister? We already know that's no, right? This other no. Right. Is it true that her father mistakenly overdosed her on medication? No. Not was true. Was there a bedwetting issue that made Pat you mad, Patsy? She kind of She's actually giggling at that. Um, she says that was very like that wasn't how they were. She says they they didn't get upset over little things like that. Oh, okay. uh, they didn't even hit the kids. She just said she said they didn't even hit like they didn't get spankings. They didn't get hit. You know, so mm -hmm. you just don't change. You just don't change overnight is what she's no, saying. No, yeah. yeah. All right. We will stop here. You guys hit the notification bell so you don't miss part two. And you guys check out Ginger in the description box below. John Bonet and Patsy, thank you so much. And if you'll remain together, then uh, we will continue. And thank you for being patient with us. You guys also follow us on TikTok and uh, the Channeling Eric YouTube channel, the Atlanta Scaler YouTube channel, blah, you know, the yeah. blah, blah, blah. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.